Now we continue our week-long edition of On the Dot when it comes to our warming climate. And today we're going to zero in on what is called methane. We know the United States is working to cut its greenhouse gases, which is a big issue. And melting of glaciers is adding to this problem, if you didn't know. David Schechter is showing us what's deep underneath. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, yeah, good to meet you. You're going to get covered in mud today. Am I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm meeting up with Dr. Andy Hodson, a glaciologist at the University Center in Svalbard. The disappearance of Svalbard's glaciers is creating a problem. The release of methane from deep underground, which is a potent greenhouse gas. I've got some beluga whales. So if we just carry on along the beach, we come to the first site that is this sort of uh, point source of methane. Lots of gas escaping uh, directly to the atmosphere. Uh, just a little housekeeping. Yeah. If you say methane, can I still say methane? Ex absolutely, yeah. I'm going to have tomato with my lunch. Uh, I'll have a tomato. Well. Let's do it. Yeah. Andy and I are hiking to a spot where you can see the gas escaping. In the last few days, it's been raining a lot around here. Yeah. This is muddy. This is going to be muddy. Right. There's an unprecedented amount of unprecedented. water here because of the rain, and now it's all coming back at us as shallow groundwater. But this bit, I'm not so sure about. Oh, that is muddy. This uh, didn't work out exactly like I thought it might. <laughs> he did say it was going to be muddy. I mean, did he not say that? Andy's telling me permafrost has the ability to lock massive amounts of ancient methane gas underground. But there's no permafrost under a glacier. So as a glacier retreats, the methane can rapidly escape. The glacial retreat is the big driver of gas escape here in the central part of Svalbard. The gas is carried to the surface by water coming up through small underground springs like this. The bubbles are methane gas. Here's the one Andy and I came to see. He and his student Lucas are measuring how fast the gas is flowing. So we're now going to just drag the um, funnel until it's sitting over the gas supply where the bubbles are coming up on the lake there. They submerge the funnel under the water and when it comes back up, it's full of methane gas. Yeah, this gas is the only thing that will bring it back up to the surface. During their research, Andy and his team checked 123 springs in Svalbard and found methane in all but one of them. What's escaping is quite modest, but what's down there is quite vast. Now that they've captured the methane, in one hand Andy has a lighter, in the other a syringe with the gas inside. I'm going to push the gas towards you and set fire to it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> what could go wrong? Whoa! <laughs> Why should people in the United States care about what's happening in Svalbard with the glaciers and the methane? The message is that there's a reason that most of the, the international research environment is here uh, doing this is because these, these early warning signs are, are critically important to understanding changes that are definitely happening. Online now, continue our adventure in Norway on this special interactive webpage. Watch our full length documentary and learn how climate change is impacting communities right now across our country. I definitely learned a lot there. You might be thinking to yourself, who are the biggest methane emitters? Well, according to the International Energy Agency, agriculture, number one, followed closely by our energy production, like the emissions from coal, oil, and natural gas. 